Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about everything you need to know about the gross profit ratio. My name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified accountant from the UK and on my channel I help out accounting students like yourself pass your upcoming examinations. So if that is interest to you, make sure you subscribe below because my channel is 100% student led. All the videos are dedicated to my lovely subscribers, just like today's as you can see on the screen because all the ratio videos are dedicated to Anurag, so thank you so much for that. And if you've got any queries yourself, be sure to leave, leave me one down below what you thought of the video and I answer absolutely all of them so be sure to give it a massive thumbs up you know just like you can see on the on the screen there with profit that we're going to be talking about today because in today's class we're going to walk and talk you through what actually is profitability then we're going to actually apply this in the gross profit ratio uh, applying the formula with actually stating what it is then linking it to an example then analyzing the actual gross profit ratio itself so if you've got a question in front of you for your upcoming examination you can follow this actual lecture slides all the way through and apply it to the question you have in front of yourself to get those top marks because the final point on there is all about the real world application and how it can apply to different industries that is the key thing that get you they're going to go going to get you those top marks on there as well so first of all, you've got to actually say to yourself, well, what actually is profitability? Well, the key definition there is the difference between the revenues, so the flows of money that are coming into the business, and the associated costs of developing those revenues, so they are deducted. What we're left with at the end is our actual profit, or determining our profitability. This is all about how effective we can actually make those profits from what we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, or where we actually invest the funds of the business, whether that be into investments, for example. This is all about risk and return. So in other words, the more risk that you take on, the greater the return you would expect, because the actual profits can be a key source of finance for any business. So when you actually gain a profit for the year, you can do two things. You can retain it within the business, or as you can see from the point four on there, it is an incentive factor to succeed. So if you own a business, such as being a shareholder, you could take a dividend from those profits. So those are your two options. You either retain it or you distribute it to the shareholders. And that, in essence, is actually a measure for success as to, well, maybe why should I invest in this company versus another well, company A has a higher profitability than company B. So coming on to the actual ratio formula, if you want to take it down in your notes today, which is simply the actual gross profit divided by the revenue multiplied by the 100. And by multiplying by 100, that gives us a percentage answer. So it makes it to be easily comparable, whether that be to your previous year figures or maybe a competitor. We'll be coming on to an actual income statement later on where these key terms are found, but the gross profit to get down in your notes so far is literally the sales, also known as the revenue, minus the cost of sales, and the cost of sales are costs associated to actually produce that product that has actually created the gross, created the actual revenue. And this is not relating to any operating expenses or overheads, which we'll touch on in the income statement. This is where, yes, you have your gross profit margin on there, but you can also compare and contrast with other ratios, such as the net profit ratio, operating profit ratio, and the return on capital employed. I've also done videos on these on my channel, so get that down in the notes, that at the end of this video, I'll put the playlist on there, check them out on there, they're all free. Because this is a real key concept to gain an understanding about where those different revenue, resource, revenue sources are coming into the business and then how can we actually manage those direct costs of actually making the product or produce the service that the business actually does. So this is the actual income statement, also known as the P&L. And as you can see on there, we've got the formula and this is a working example for you to actually follow through, apply the formula and take the figures. So you can see where we've actually got the gross profit of the 800 divided by the 1000 and you've got different words that mean the same thing. So be careful which one they're applied in your examination. So that's sales, turnover or revenue. But notice on there how the gross profit margin is all about the top part of the income statement. So what that means is for every one pound we actually sell and generate in sales, 80 pence of that in this example on here relates to our gross profit margin and that's the 80% on there. So you've got the gross profit ratio which is using the formula and then when we get the percentage that relates to the margin. 
Now, as you can see on there, we've got other factors further on in the income statement, whether that's interest, tax, operating profit, and we touched on it before that you'd calculate the gross profit margin, compare and contrast with the other ratios, and that can lead you to a better, more informed decision, regardless of maybe you wanting to invest in the company, or potentially you're a stakeholder that you're an internal manager. This is where we come on to now the actual analysis of the gross profit ratio. And the first key thing to get down, and again, applying the key figures from the previous slide, we can actually have it measured in two different ways absolute terms and relative terms. So absolute is that actual 800 pounds of gross profit as a whole figure versus the actual proportion, the relative terms of our 80% margin on there. So it's just a different way of actually communicating the information to the users of the information. But the key thing that you'd have to be applying in your actual answer is, well, how could we actually look to increase the gross profit margin? And there are two ways. Because we're only using that top part of the income statement, if the gross profit margin is going to go up, two things have to happen. Either the, we have an increase in revenue, turnover or sales, or we decrease the cost of sale. So maybe we can actually become more efficient in the way that we produce our goods, or maybe we can get a better deal from our suppliers. These are different ways of going about it that you should look to try and apply. Then you've got to say to yourself, well, which stakeholders, so people or organizations, are actually interested in the gross profit margin? Well, the key ones on here are the shareholders because they want it to be as high as possible. Internal management accountants want to actually understand which are the most profitable aspects of how we're actually producing the product. So the lower we can get it, the higher our margins are going to be on there. And also the suppliers because the cost of sales workings, which again, I've done another video on the channel for, relate to, well, the inventory and our purchases. So to work out the cost of sales, it's our opening inventory plus our purchases less our closing inventory, and that gives us our actual cost of sales figure for the period. Just for you to note down another good discussion point to link into the gross profit ratio. And finally on here, what to, what to do with the actual gross profit now on there? Well, we touched on it before, but the higher the better, because this is actually where it comes into uh, effect before other expenses. So maybe a good key point to get down there is before the operating expenses or before other overheads. This is where we can actually dive into the figures in a lot more detail, looking at the allocation of resources, how effectively are we utilizing them and the staff associated with the direct costs, and then also our wastage analysis, actually how much discard have we got or how much are we actually maybe throwing away or maybe recycling, depending on the business you're given. This is where we've already touched it before, the cost of sales calculation comes into it and you've got to really dive into the detail on there and actually pick up on where could the business improve. So this really comes down to the actual real world application of this, that you've now got to start to picture, and I've put on here some examples of different types of company and how it could relate, but try to write down in your own words, in your own notes, a type of business that you are comfortable to discuss because that's where you're gonna get the real added value because not every business operates in the same way. So try to picture, and I talk about it quite a lot on the channel, a car manufacturing plant, because I can imagine the cars coming in, they actually have the production line, I've been to a few car manufacturing areas, and this is where I can actually differentiate between, is that a direct cost, or is it a indirect cost, for example. You've also got to consider the other factors of the company and the financial statement. So yes, the gross profit ratio is those three lines in the income statement, but this has a knock-on effect on other areas of the financial statements and annual reports that involve internal and external stakeholders. So what if your question you have in front of you is a small startup company that's only been trading for six months, for example? Well, the gross profit margin is more than likely going to be pretty low because you're gonna have low sales. They've probably had to make some heavy investment to try and gain some long-term profitability. But again, it comes down to what type of products or services are they actually potentially selling to customers. If it's more of a service-based industry, well, that's gonna have more operating expenses. So I'd expect the cost of sales figure to be really, really small. And hence that would lead to a higher gross profit margin, obviously depending on the level of revenue. But these are just things to consider. I mean, if it's an established company on here, you're more than likely going to have maybe steady profits. 
linking into some sort of variance analysis and the sort of stability as to, well, maybe where can we be more efficient, cutting costs just to get us into a more profitable long-term reach and potentially becoming a publicly listed company. And this is where shareholder wealth maximization is key and will always link into the gross profit ratio. Or in other words, if you're a shareholder in a business, you want profits to be up and you want the share price to go up. And to do that, so the gross profit has to go up on there. And investors, as you can see on here, want the profitability, the security and assurance, but not to compromise quality at the end of the day. This is where you've got to apply that real world application to the example you're given in your exam. Well, that takes you through absolutely everything you need to know for the gross profit margin. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and give the video a massive like. Click a couple of the videos on the screen, they're definitely gonna help you out. And if you've got any questions, leave me a comment at the bottom. It could be the difference in you passing your exam. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.